simp, a word that exploded onto the scene harder than a teenage boy seeing Belle Delphine for the first time. A word which became ingrained in the modern Gen Z dialect so instantaneously that nobody ever stopped to ask themselves, why? Why is a simp a simp? And what do the English Civil War, carnivals in the early 1900s America, and 80s hip-hop all have in common? Well, fill up a glass of bathwater and let's travel all the way back to 1600s England to find out. It's the 1640s. You're a member of English Parliament, and King Charles I is begging you for money for the third time after you told him to piss off the first two times. This really grinds your gears, so instead of deciding to grant him the money he wants, you get together with all your Parliament friends and start absolutely roasting the hell out of the king. Charles loves Catholicism, and I mean loves Catholicism. Your colleague John Pym takes the floor and spews out an absolutely obscene string of insults, ranging from fop doodle to Nash gab, and to top it all off, he takes a deep breath and then calls King Charles a Catholic simp. Bolton. Everyone gasps. This is a low word. For a prestigious member of parliament to use such a slang term is unbecoming, but soon everything devolves back into giggles, and the savage roast continues because everyone knows that Charles is, in fact, a simpleton. The word simpleton is an intriguing starting point for our tale because it, too, is a mysterious word that seemed to pop out of nowhere. So much so that even in 1883, scholars were attempting to discover its origin, only to find out that it was an elusive slang term that could have any number of possible starting points. Some posit that it's a play on last names that have the ton suffix. Names like Harrington or Washington or, of course, Lazyton. This would imply that a simpleton comes from a whole town of simple people an absolute scorcher of a burn. Others rudely assumed that Italians were being manhandled by early 1600s comedians who decided that there were enough stupid people named Tony in the country that it deserved its own word. Simple Tony. Simpleton. There are various other less interesting theories I won't bring up because how could it get better than scholars thinking someone really hated people named Tony and thought, fuck it, I'll make a word out of it. After the mid-1700s, the trail goes cold for a while. Simpleton was probably used occasionally, but its slangish nature made it a slippery eel to catch. Samuel Johnson, the first guy to write an English dictionary, said that it was not fit for polite use. As a result, it didn't rear its head again until over 150 years later, when the development of modern sensibilities meant that people were far too lazy to say the whole word. It's 1903. A carnival worker is doing the bally for a sideshow when suddenly you and your significant other walk by him on your way toward a game tent. You're attracted by the flash that he's carefully displayed to make the game look appealing. You tell your significant other that it's probably not worth playing because the game definitely can't be won, but the shill in the crowd convinces you by throwing the duke shot, which makes it in the basket and stays in. You and your date agree to play, so the worker casually removes the dead balls from the basket, ensuring that the balls you throw will bounce out every time. As you slowly lose all your cash attempting to win a giant stuffed animal, the carny leans over to his friend and says, these is hezek, bezel ezongs, ezon, these a simp heister. Simp heister being the carnival slang term for a ferris wheel, since it hoists simps into the air. Who's the simp in this situation? You. You're the simp. That's right, simp rears its head for the first time in its shortened form as carny slang for an ignorant mark. Carnival workers actually developed an entire language for the express purpose of deceiving simps. Known as kazarni, the cant, similar to pig Latin, involved the insertion of the sound ease or is into words before the first vowel of each syllable. Additionally, they had a veritable dictionary of unique words that, combined with the cant, allowed them to communicate without tipping you off that they were about to fleece you for everything you had. One of the words that appears in this lexicon is, of course, our simp. And while it's clearly still an extension of the classic simpleton, meaning someone who's not too bright, it does now contain a tinge of gullibility and even the idea of losing money. <clears throat> Through the next few decades, it pops up in similar fashion in Motion Picture Magazine in 1917 and in the New York Times in 1924, both uses still clearly calling someone stupid, but we're moving generally in the right direction. Unfortunately, our trail runs cold again as both Simp and Kazarni slowly disappear, but they don't die completely. No, they live on in two of the least likely places, professional wrestling and hip hop. It's 1981 and you're at the roller rink absolutely shredding. You're attempting to impress your crush who's sitting at a table drinking a shake. They look over at you. It's your moment to shine. You tighten the laces on your full precision skates in preparation for a sweet 360 when suddenly, what's that on the radio? Oh my God, it's your jam. It's Frankie Smith's Double Dutch Bus. Double Dutch Bus coming down the street. 
This song was the first time the so-called Izzle speak, that enjoyed a resurgence during the Harlem Renaissance, was put on tape. Clearly inspired by Kazarni and likely passed down over the decades, it was used as a way of adding more syllables to words in order to maintain rhythm in double dutch rhymes. But it was also a general street code learned by many of the artists that would take over the early hip hop scene like Doc Ice. Frankie Smith's work on Double Dutch Bus wasn't just an example of this Izzle speak that would inspire the likes of Snoop Dogg though, it was also one of the first examples of recorded rap. Rap, though it gained traction at block parties in the 70s, didn't take on the form we know today until 1979 and on into the early 80s. Why are we focusing on Double Dutch Bus, though? Well, because Double Dutch Bus was the first song that featured rapping and Kazarni or Izzle speak. And rapping and Izzle speak lead us right back onto the trail of our target. Yes, Simp triumphantly returns, and nearly in its full-fledged form, this period between early 1900s carny-speak version of Simp, which is still an extension of Simpleton, and our modern definition, is the most mysterious. How did the word transform so strongly in meaning? It's worth considering words like sympathetic and simpering as potential origins for this new form. Clear lines can be drawn from each of these words to its current definition, but I think there's an even clearer and all-encompassing answer here, and the hip-hop era is our missing link. More specifically, pimp culture. According to Too Short, simp is the opposite of pimp, so clearly to understand simp we must first understand pimp. Like a carny, a pimp was someone who could be considered cleverly entrepreneurial. The pimp is a symbol, he embodies the same ideals as the trickster character archetype, like Robin Hood or Loki. He finds success in spite of the forces around him, demonstrating a wily intelligence. In the 1980s, the explosion of consumerism combined with the economic policies that were decimating inner city neighborhoods resulted in communities with relatively few chances for upward mobility. In these places, the shining beacon of what was possible was the pimp. He displayed a lavish lifestyle when others around him were struggling. He played the game and beat the system. In hip-hop, the ideal pimp wasn't necessarily a literal pimp, but a figurative one. And many hip-hop artists took on these personas as they developed their character. Simp, then, in this new form, is the representation of the opposite of these things. An unsuccessful person who does not beat the system, who remains in poverty, who wields no power, who gets no bitches. Because figurative or not, the pimpish tropes that hip-hop adopted were impossible to fully separate from the gender relationships established in the pimping trade. As such, the stereotypes therein are front and center in the music. The idea of controlling women instead of being controlled by them is a clear theme. A simp, in these terms, is being controlled. These connotations play a role in why the word was backronymed as suckas idolizing mediocre pussy. By nature of the time period and the culture it was adopted by, simp takes on the final piece that turns it into the word we know today. Yet it remains isolated to this particular culture and musical genre until almost 40 years later. December 2019. TikTok has reached its peak. You've been browsing for two and a half hours, but it felt like minutes. You're swiping through equal parts decent comedy and absolute cringe. It's almost Christmas, so you're snuggled up on the couch with hot cocoa. It's snowing outside. The fire is crackling. It feels like nothing could go wrong. Nothing terrible could be lurking on the horizon, could it? Suddenly, you swipe up and see this. And then this. And then this. What is this? Do you do these things? Oh God, are you a simp? Simp goes viral and it immediately becomes intermingled with various other topical ideas in the world of modern romantic relationships. Nice guys, white knights, incels, oh my. It's very easy to make a connection between simp nation and the equally dangerous friend zone. They both imply a sort of limbo zone where one participant in a relationship is attempting to ingratiate themselves with the other and are not receiving anything in return. It's easy to look at this from a masculine versus feminine standpoint, and it certainly warrants such a lens, but there is also a larger psychological perspective I think is worth addressing here. And it helps to start with the question, what is the difference between a simp and a gentleman? The difference is expectations? and dignity. Ingrained in the idea of being a simp is a concept of expectation, being nice with an intent to receive something in return. In the same way the incel responds to a lack of reciprocated emotions with anger and hatred, the simp responds by continuing to deepen the rabbit hole of emotional overextension in order to get over a perceived hill between them and their desired outcome. This is a failure to acknowledge that in many cases this hill is actually a wall. An incel bangs his fists against this wall, a simp tries to lick its toes, 
But a gentleman turns around and sees that this wall only stops them from reaching this particular castle, and that there are many other castles around worth a look that may be much more welcoming. There's a clear indication in the use of the word simp from its origin as simpleton until now that it degrades the individual it's being applied to. In our modern use of the word, though, much of this degradation is self-inflicted. Worse than being called a simp, is realizing that you are one. There is something clearly undignified about debasing yourself by intentionally ignoring the wall we talked about earlier. You're deceiving yourself, and you're causing both yourself and the other individual involved harm. It's this self-deception that is indicative of a more deeply rooted psychological insecurity that describes the difference between a gentleman and a simp. A simp does what they think a person will perceive as right and be thankful for. A gentleman does what's right. Period. And though I'm using the word gentleman, this applies to anyone regardless of gender. Simp Nation is as inclusive as it gets. The fascinating journey we've been on, from the European Renaissance to the Harlem Renaissance to the e-girl Renaissance, teaches us two things. First, there will always be insults, and they will always be relevant to the time they are used. We take words and we adapt them to what we need. There's a strange force in society that acts like middle school bullying, but on a larger scale. Society itself is based upon a shared belief system of right and wrong tenets that guide what is and isn't acceptable, and part of the structure that supports this system is language. Words. Nobody wants to be called a murderer, and nobody wants to be called a simp. The value of words as a tool of society to maintain order is undeniable, but the arguments over which words in which times are of acceptable value and which aren't will be never-ending. This is part of the way society continually reinvents itself. Much can be gleaned from which words are popular in a particular time period, and the popularity of simp, friend zone, white knight, and words like them indicate a festering misunderstanding of masculinity, femininity, and relationship dynamics as we transition into a postmodern era where traditional values around these topics are now up for debate. And while public debate on these topics is valuable, most often these words shine a light on what you as an individual need to look at within yourself. Clarify your ideas, challenge your perceptions, and develop well-organized thoughts about the things you take stances on. Don't settle for having a thought structure made of pieces of other people's opinions. Parroting the thoughts you read about without considering whether they align with your true values is its own kind of simp behavior. It doesn't mean you shouldn't agree with something someone else says, or something you've read. It just means you should stop and think about it for a while. Look at that idea from angles you normally wouldn't, consider it through different lenses, create a full-color photo of your ideals, and then go into the world and help us do the same thing as a society. The second thing we learned during this journey is that 80s and 90s hip-hop fucking slaps. Yo, give me 50, back up, move, babe, getting close to you. Thank you all for watching, and I'll see you in the next video. If you're interested in learning more about anything we talked about today, I've included all the links to my research in the description. Lastly, if you liked the video, consider subscribing. It helps a lot, and I'm happy to have you join the channel.